الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد as muslims we are commanded to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often that this is something that will help strengthen your heart this will help uh, strengthen your faith and make one uh, come closer to the creator of the heavens and earth by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we come closer to him we fulfill our duties as believers and the heart becomes uh, able to deal with the burdens and trials and difficulties that we face in life for the believer this dhikr or this remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a type of guidance and it's a type of uh, it's a type of uh, light in a person's life and it helps strengthen a person to help them deal with the daily trials and tribulations of life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says which means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty says uh, what means remember me <coughs> remember me and I will remember you so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to remember him to be conscious of him to be God fearful to be God conscious and do those things which uh, those things which bring us closer to him and stay away from those things which he has prohibited this is divine guidance this is that which will elevate a person in this life as well as the hereafter and by doing that by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will remember us when we're in difficulty when we're in difficulty by making things easy for us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that with every difficulty there is relief with every difficulty there is relief and so every time we experience a difficulty in this life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also allowing for us or a, a, a way and a means to purify ourselves and a chance to come closer and remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that also with that with that purification that chance to purify yourself during those great trials and tribulations is also the uh, the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there's going to be relief is soon coming from your difficulty from the difficulties and trials that we experience in this life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us ease but it's up to us to be patient it's up to us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember him as much as we can and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often so that you will be successful subhanallah that shows us that success is related to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by thinking about him by uh, remembering him by his divine names and attributes by reflecting on the creation because the creation was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when we go out into nature and we see the beauty of uh, the things that we of scientific discovery of the the wonders in the creation the animals and so forth all of these are signs that our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala exists these are the wonders of his creation so how wonderful is the one who created that creation so this is those are, are just some of the ways that we can reflect uh, and remember our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator and in a hadith on Abi Harayrata radiallahu anhu on Abi Harayrata radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان فقيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم متفق عليه in this hadith narration 
uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that two words or maybe uh, these are two uh, what is meant by uh, two words this is something that is simple and it's something that is beneficial it is a a simple phrase that is beneficial and very short and by these two phrases so the Prophet Sallallahu said there are two phrases that are very easy upon the tongue. They're very simple to pronounce, very easy on the tongue. But they're heavy on the scale, meaning the scale which will weigh our deeds on the day of judgment. So they are, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <coughs> Alhamdulillah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these phrases have great reward and are great because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be praised and loves to be remembered. And these will benefit us on the day of judgment. <clears throat> so, these phrases are beloved to Ar-Rahman. They are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahman means the most merciful. This is in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves these phrases. And with that, the first phrase being subhanallah wa bahamdihi. All praises. Uh, glorified is Allah the Almighty and all praise belongs to Him. That all the praise, all the praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is glorified and free from the things that people attribute to him, which is not true. For example, when people associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say that he is a son, he is a daughter, he has a wife, etc. Uh, all of these things are false. And Allah is free from all of that. Subhanallah. So by saying this simple phrase, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this phrase. This is a simple way and a type of charity that anyone can do. It doesn't require money. It doesn't require a lot of time. It doesn't require much effort. And it's available for all of us to say, Subhanallah wa bahamdi. The second phrase that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, he said, Subhanallah al-Azim. And glorif glorified is Allah, the Almighty the great Allahu Akbar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mighty and great and worthy of praise and worship all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this shows us the greatness and how simple it is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in another hadith narration also narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن أقول لأن أقول سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر أحب إلي مما طلعت عليه الشمس رواه مسلم So in this hadith narration that was also collected by Abu Huraira also narrated by Abu Huraira, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, for me to say, Subhanallah, glorified is Allah, Walhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah, La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, Wallahu Akbar, and Allah is the greatest. This is more beloved to me than what the sh what the sun uh, sets upon, meaning the earth, meaning the creation. <laughs> that by saying, by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that way, is more beloved to the Prophet sallallahu than everything in the dunya. Because that which in, in this life that does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the heart that doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a dead heart. That is truly a dead heart. It's not the heart that's in that of the person of the soul 
that were that has departed the body, but really the dead heart that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in another narration is the heart. I'm sorry, the Prophet ﷺ did mention, but one of the the classical scholars mentioned this is the heart that uh, does not remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The heart that does not remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is in fact a dead heart, and. Some of the benefits that we gain from those two hadith, the first one is that it ca it it they call us to remember Allah the Almighty often, and that He is far removed from any type of uh, polytheism, you know, to worship other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That those things that's free from our Lord Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that all praise belongs to Him and all greatness belongs to Him. And that this is affirms his oneness, that he is the only one worthy of worship, that there is no true servitude to anything in the creation, uh, and that could be comparable to the servitude that we must have for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because He created the creation; the creation will, will leave, but the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and Allah Tabarak Wa Taala Himself. Is ever uh, Allah is ever living. Allah subhanahu wa taala has no end and He has no beginning. And so, by saying these, uh, by remembering Allah subhanahu wa taala often, this is light for us, and this is better, the best thing that you could have in the dunya, that you could have in this life. The best thing that you could do is remember Allah subhanahu wa taala and do those activities which cause you to remember Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala often and more. And the great the, the this these hadith narrations also illustrate the greatness and the reward that we will receive by from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that this adjur, this reward does not end. Even though the worldly life will end. The uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ends. So the greatest thing that an individual could do would be to remember his Lord often, for he or she to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often, and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is the monotheism. This is what Islam calls us to. This is what all the prophets and messengers were sent with. All of the previous prophets and messengers before the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and including him were all sent with the same message. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولِنَا نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَرِبُ تَعْبُودِ That we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and Stay away from those things which are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the purpose for us as human beings. That is our purpose. Our purpose is to worship the one true God. Because he's the only one worthy of worship. And remembering him, doing something as simple as just remembering him, remembering his commandments and staying away from those prohibited things. By remembering his divine names and attributes, reflecting on them reflecting in the creation, that He created it. All of these things will bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're all a part of that worship that the prophets and messengers were sent with and that we all must strive to do. So, going back to the, the, the main uh, 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 point of those two hadith is that we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and much and that this will bring us closer to to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty and it is something simple and easy that any of us can do by uh, with our tongues just by remit and, and reflecting on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making dhikr by saying Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillah Subhanallah uh, and, and, and these beautiful ways of praising and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with success in this life as well as the hereafter. Bless us with guidance. And and forgive us of all our shortcomings. And bless us with and bless this to be a source of guidance for myself, 